more than a year, these Greek cleaning women have been a symbol of the injustices of austerity. For months, they camped outside the finance ministry's office demanding their jobs back. Jobs they'd lost under budget cuts the finance ministry deemed necessary to meet the conditions for the 240 billion euro EU IMF bailout. These women voted for Syriza, which had promised to rehire them. A promise to right the wrongs this woman feels many Greeks have endured. For five years, people have paid for a crisis they were not responsible for. During this crisis, people who were earning lots of money continued earning lots of money and even earned more. But the middle and lower classes were not to blame for everything, but they are paying for it all. We were plunged from paradise into a living hell. But how to clean up this living hell brought on by austerity measures will be a tall order for this man. Alexis Tsipras, whose so-called radical left Syriza party was swept into power last month on a promise of erasing the misery blamed on the bailout. The verdict of the Greek people, your verdict, cancels today in an indisputable way the bailout agreements of austerity and disaster. Since his victory, Europe's political and economic eyes have been on Tsipras, asking the inevitable, how is he going to do it? How is he going to find the money to erase a debt which is 176% of the GDP? Or sweep in changes in a country where more than one out of four Greeks is unemployed, where recession in Greece is the worst seen since the 1930s Great Depression. One way Cyprus has vowed to erase this austerity and justice is to crack down on tax evasion. An evasion the OECD claims cost Greece an estimated 20 billion euros in lost tax revenue each year. But how to collect taxes in a country where tax evasion has even been called a national sport? Harry Theoharis used to head Greece's tax collection agency, but he resigned last June. He denies it was because of death threats. The real threat was populism. I decided that uh, because the uh, priorities of the government were of a more populist turn, it, this would make increasingly uh, harder my job. If you would like to give you an example, before elections, governments like to soften our response to citizens that owe taxes. So instead of actually doing seizures, forcing them to pay, taking measures that are socially harder to swallow, uh, they would ask us to be more lenient, etc., etc. Today, Theo Harris is an MP for the Patami Party. He believes Cyprus is honest and determined to stop corruption, but his job won't be easy. Syriza has the potential to be different. It's certainly the ties are not the same. It hasn't been in power for a long time. It just started effectively. But my judgment is that it will have some difficult time to sort of totally cleaning up, cleaning up the slate and uh, be totally free of uh, any ties. Along with tourism, Greece's shipping industry has long been the key economic lifeblood of the country. It accounts for 8% of the country's GDP and half a million jobs connected directly or indirectly to the industry. But it also conjures up images of shipping oligarchs taking their fortunes out of Greece and of course getting generous tax breaks. Michael Boduroglu, who runs a shipping company out of Athens, disagrees. He says not only are taxes paid, but there have been no salary cuts during the crisis. Uh, there are no tax breaks for ship owners. Ship owners are paying taxes uh, in the same way as uh, our colleagues pay them all over the world. And frankly, if we did receive tax breaks in this country, then we would have had uh, many of our European colleagues uh, relocated here as they have the right and enjoy the benefits that we have, which is something that we have not seen. The big problem, the, the reason why the country developed a huge deficit that was not manageable any longer, is the fact that we, we ended up with a very expensive public sector. Very populous, very expensive, and of course I would also add very inefficient and hostile to businesses. When the Eurozone crisis hit full force five years ago, the only way out seen for Greece was the EU IMF bailout condition on reforms. Reforms, many Greeks argue, brought Greece to its economic knees. They blame their government, but they especially blame the Troika. Elena Panaritis supported the first bailout, now she advises Syriza. 
For her, the crisis is not the insolvency of Greece, but of Europe, which has had zero growth since 2008. We have really created a, a wonderful experiment that worked for a little bit as all we had surpluses called the Euro and the European Union. When, you know, so when the, when the cows were fat and the milk was out there, we were all happy. But now that the cows are thin and the milk is drying, we still haven't found our bearings. And, and the little canary, Greece, is being like dying along because there is no oxygen. And instead of saying, oh, guys, we need to get out of this coal mine and bring some oxygen and whatever, we're, going, we're tying further, we're, we're, we're closing further the tab. But the Troika argues Greece was given oxygen, 240 billion euros of it, especially in 2012 to stop Greece from defaulting and exiting the euro. But with Cyprus warning the Greek debt is unsustainable, the word Grexit has appeared again in the Eurozone dictionary. What we have seen in the course of the past weeks is also part of the hysteria surrounding all this Grexit discussion. I refrain from any speculation in that area, but I would argue that it is, in my view, not a good idea to test the proposition that the Eurozone is better prepared for a Grexit. I doubt that this is the case. You may have a new architecture regarding rescue, you may have new financial resources, but you have a society and a democratic process here. Dimitra Mandiku is part of that democratic process. This mother of three says she lost everything because of the crisis and the bailout. She lost her business, her health, her marriage and soon maybe her home. She blames the banks and she blames the government for bailing out the banks and not the people. Today she's surviving on 300 euros a month. She voted for Syriza. I wasn't someone who was living on other people or not paying my bills. I wasn't shying away from my responsibilities. But life was getting so hard I couldn't sleep. Two years ago they found I had cancer and the doctors said it was caused by stress. Finally I followed my friend's advice. They were all doing it and I stopped paying because I didn't have the money. We just feel, well, you brought us to this. We can't pay for anything. Do whatever you want. We don't care. Put us in jail. End of story. Do whatever you want. For those who voted for Syriza and its anti-bailout stance, this is the message. The bailout operation has failed and don't blame the patient. They did an experiment on us. They tried in this way to reduce deficits and all of that with this experiment, but it failed. The patient died. While both the Greek government and Europe are working on how to revive the patient, these women, like many Greeks, are waiting. Waiting not only to go back to work, but to find a dignity Syriza has vowed to restore at almost any cost.